This will be a fun night. <clears throat> I'm back at D and D. I thought I'd do more uh, uh, Essigo streaming here. Time to join a grand company. That's what's next. Spoilers, I suppose. But this will also help with a few things. Oh, the triumphant hero returns. Thancred told us the news upon his arrival. He's president of Solar, giving a full report to Mephidia. You should join them at once. Mephidia is most eager to see you. My late arrival nearly cost Elagos his life. I wasn't there when the Amulter took him prisoner. And I wasn't there when they served him to Freet. Yes, but some miracle he survived. But that does not excuse the fact that he should never have had to face such dangers alone. I failed him utterly. This is unfailing you all. What's done is done, Thancred. You can ill blame yourself for every... Essigos, it is so good to see you again. Impeccable timing, my friend. I just finished regaling Minfilia of your heroic exploits. Thancred has told me everything. You have done well to return to us. The perils you faced were undeniably great, yet a part of me believes that you have no cause to fear. And now you can put, pay, put paid to our long investigation. As we suspected, the Amalja undertook both the robbery and the abductions with the aim of summoning their primal Ifrit. Nor is this tale limited to Ulda. Similar incidents have been rife in both Limsa and Liminsa and Gridania of late. I dare say, I've been curious as to how these crimes would link to the primals. Permit me to explain. Having manifested in the physical realm, primals can consume ether if they are to maintain their presence. And the stronger they become, the more ether, ether they require. Now, ether exists throughout creation. It flows through all life and permeates the very air that we breathe. Alas, this alone will not suffice to sustain the likes of Ifrit. Nay, he and his kind require a more concentrated source of ether. Crystals. It is for this reason that incidences involving crystals can often be traced back to the primal. Which leaves us with the why of the abductions. To understand this, you must first understand how primals are born. When all is well with the world, primals possess no physical form. Their essence is dispersed across the great river of Ether. However, when the world is plunged into chaos, those who worship the primals cry out to their gods for deliverance from suffering. These cries serve as beacon toward which a primal's essence is irresistibly drawn. It is this coming together, or etheric, etheric coalescence, which grants the being's physical form. Once born, a primal gains strength from its followers' worship. The more numerous and fervent they are, the more powerful their god becomes. But the primals are seldom satisfied with such reverence as their adherents freely give, and in order to gain more power, they do not not scruple to create followers. They do this by tempering mortals, a process which you yourself were subjugated. Yet even as if 
as Efreet took your comrades in thrall, you alone remained unaffected. This is thanks to the power you possess, the Echo. We know not the why of it, but these, those blessed with the Echo are immune to primal influence. It is as though a greater power protects us. When first you came to us, I told you that the Echo would be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. I trust you now begin to see why. The recent incidences all share a common trait, meticulous planning. Such elaborate designs are a new development, and one which fills me with an unshakable sense of foreboding. While I share your concerns, my presiding, fe presiding feeling is one of relief at your safe return. Ah, the immortal flames assured me that they will deal with the aftermath, so you need not concern yourself with that. We may rest easy for a time. I suggest you take full advantage of the respite, Essigus. You may be sure it won't be last long. Once the people learn the identity of the hero who felled Ifrit, I fear you will have nearly a moment to yourself. Whether she intended to or no, Minfilia neglected to tell you something. Something I think it would be best for you to heard from one of us. It concerns the tempered Duckties that were rescued. I'm sorry to report that all are to be put to death. The flames with whom you were imprisoned included. Needless to say, this information must not be made known to the public. I swear to you that you would, do, would not do this if there were any other course. But once a man is tempted, he is tempered for life. His very existence lends strength to the primal. Whom he cannot, if you cannot choose but worship. And so we scions continue our fight, that no more innocents need to be sacrificed. I hope that you will continue to stand with us, Essegos. And I should be going. I must offer my apologies to the Flame General for the losses his people suffered. Till next time. Gods, forgive me. How many more lives? Louis Swab would never have allowed this to happen. I have to do better. I have to be stronger. Ophelia is wearing a red smile. Might it have something to do with the newfound fame? Until not so very long ago, you were what one of many adventurers seeking to make their way in Eorzea. But for your character and courage, you have raised the esteemed post of envoy. Therefore, you have traveled the realm, aided the, those in need without thought of reward, confirming to Thancred that the science would benefit from your aid. But no sooner had you joined us than you personally bested the primal of Freet. You have achieved a great deal in your in a short time, and won fame in so, in so doing. Alas, fame does not come without a price, as you will soon discover. We have guests, Eskos. Or rather, you have guests. Ah, uh, Lady Menphilia, radiant as always. I was given to understand that the science of the Seventh Thought have but recently welcomed a new hero in the, into their midst. I'm here on behalf of the Maelstrom, Grand Company of Limsa Lemensa, to offer said hero a place of honor within our ranks. As you can see, Essegos, your recent exploits has garnered the attention of the Grand Companies of Eosia. Each organization would have a free Spain on its own. Mm. To this end, all three have, have sent officers to court you. 
They would not ordinarily go to such lengths to enlist as a new recruit, but they have to have is evidence of their high regard for you. I find myself wondering how word of Eska's deed spread so quickly that the immortal flames wouldn't know of his triumph is to be expected, but what of the other grand companies? Eep! <laughs> Reputation precedes you, Master, uh, Master Winsmall. Tis no ordinary man who can face a primal in revenge of victor. The Order of the Twin Adder has need of a valiant men, of valiant men such as you. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us ensure, ensure that peace never ever reigns over the Twelve Wood. What a pleasure it is to finally meet you, Master Winsmall. My comrades speak of you in the most glowing terms. Why, even before you aided us against the Amalta and their dread primal, yours is already a respected name in Ulda. My people know you and love you well. The man of your talents belongs with the immortal flames. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us secure a prosperous future for Ulda. The Admiral is not exaggerating when she said she it said you have the look of a hero. Full upon often does she speak of you, friend. It is only natural that you would want want you for the maelstrom. Join our strength to your, ours, and together let us see the grand vessel of Lipsa Lamenta in the shores of glory. Uh <laughs> Lady Minfilia? Very well. Though I'm quite sure you need no more mining, <clears throat> mayhap a brief summary of the situation may help to clarify your thoughts on the matter. As you know, the Grand Companies are all-encompassing organizations empowered to call <clears throat> upon the martial, economic, and technological resources of their respective city-states in times of strife. There are re presently three such organizations in Eorzea, the Maelstrom of Lintum and Lip, Limsa Lominsa, the Order of the Twin Adder of Gridania, and the Immortal Flames of Ulda. <clears throat> serving a grand company means serving the nation in which it belongs. You will be charged with its defense and tasked with advancing its cause. In return of your faithful service, you will be furnished with various rewards, some of which may prove useful to you in your other endeavors. If you are agonizing over which of the grand companies best serves your own loyalty, to be at ease. The commitment you make this day will not be permanent. Should you wish to shift your allegiance at a later date, you are entitled to do so. And yet, I can see that it is no sm small choice you face. Ah, a thought occurs to me. You will, of course, recall that the three city-states are planning to hold remembrance services. Well, as part of the proceedings, I am given to understand that the leader of each grand company will address, deliver an address. Hearing these addresses might ought to help you make an informed decision. What say you, my dear officers? A fine, a fine suggestion. You are wise, as you are beautiful, my lady. Very well. Let us go hear our leader speak, then return here with his decision. We eagerly await your answer. See, none of you are Lollafell, so. <laughs> I know full well that adventurers are by their nature a liberty love of breed and not best suited for the discipline of military service. But I strongly urge you to join a grand company nonetheless. While the promise of reward is enticing in itself, it is not the only benefit. You are possessed with great power, Essigos, and with it you are capable of doing untold good. Yet know that great power is wont to attract attention, not all of it friendly. There will be those who wish you ill, and you must needs be at the lookout for them. Yet, however vigilant you are, you are but one man. In the midst of the grand company, however, you will be one man amongst many, a friend amongst friends. Your achievements will be shared, and so will the danger. 
I can think of no better arrangement. Of course, joining one organization need not mean in leaving another. I hope that you can continue to reply on your, rely on your aid. The Twelve know that you will have need of it in the days ahead. The Grand Companies seek to protect their own nations. We Scions, on the other hand, seek to preserve the future of Eorzea as a whole. Similar, yet not quite the same. <clears throat> now then, I expect that you will be afield more often in the future. As such, <clears throat> I would have you carry this link pearl with you at all times. It will allow us to stay in touch regardless of location. <clears throat> Eorzea is changing its guess, and you have the power to help shape it anew. None can say that the morrow will bring, but so long as we believe in them ourselves, there is not we cannot achieve. Now it's time you make ready for your journey. Before you depart, be sure to speak with Tatar. She, has a pr she will praise you as to where and when the remembrance services are due to take place. <clears throat> All right. I get too close to that, and it uh, always, like, turns me around. I, um, I'm sorry about all the attention you're getting, Eskos. I might have sung your praises a little bit too loudly and often to a few too many people. <clears throat> Next time, I'm sh I'll be sure to hold my tongue, literally if necessary. Anyway, I expect you to know where and when the remembrance is taking place. If all goes as planned, Gridania's Grand Company, the Order of the Twin Adder, will hold the first of the three services, and the Elder Seed Seer, Kana and Sena, will deliver her address at Minketo Amphitheater. I should probably mention at this point that due to the organizational challenges involved in assembling all the involved par parties, it's possible that the order of the services might change. Still, there's not much we can do about that, so make for Gridania as your first port of call. Next, you'll need to go to Ulda, where Flame General Bon Alden will be addressing the masses of th at the Royal Promenade. Oh, and it's rumored that there will be a special guest. How exciting. Last but not least, we must make your, your way to the stateroom in Limsa Lamenta, where mails from Chief Admiral Mirwai Blofluwin will be giving her address. The room is accessible via the Admiral's lift. Identify yourself to the sentry, Senthio, and he will admit you. Got all that? Well, off you go then. I hope to find the Remembrance Services suitably educational. I suggest visiting the city-states in my prescribed order, though, with my record of impeccable timing and luck, the schedule may well change in favor of your preferred travel plans. Farewell. Basically, what it's saying is, you just need to visit all these. It doesn't really matter the order. We just gave you an order. <laughs> I'm going to follow her order. Keeps the thing somewhat simple. All those decorations, because of the event that's happening again, disappear. I lost and here we are. To the calamity. The three sorcerers are all together. A sorcerer who couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Four 
bears were once strangers in the Twelves Wood. Fearful of the green wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Bradania was born some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hur and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity, and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. Do you see the Gridanian stand? There, hanging behind the elder seed seal. The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizan. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? In accordance with the will of the elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves, nor for us. Though we Gridanians have no love for war, we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life. Ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the Twelveswood. When the Garlean Empire brought its war of conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartanel. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixil have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. Time was a man could the walk the high road itself. without fear. On this day, five years ago, countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? The destruction wrought by the calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about 
raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient vows. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children! Woods will be done. It's up to us to protect the forest. All the elementals! If you'll permit me, Alfino and my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. The Gradanians are unfortunate enough to have to contend with two beast tribes. The Ixal are unquestionably the more troublesome, being of a naturally warlike disposition and want to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. The Sylphs, by contrast, are peaceful in nature, being mischievous rather than malevolent and having long been on friendly terms with the Gradanians, until recently at least, Alas, they have grown aloof, a change observed but at roughly the time they summoned the primal Ramu. The Gardanians have no love for war, and they consider open conflict a last resort. Though they clash with the Ixal ever clash with the Ixal ever more regularly, you may be assured that they do so in self defense. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty, though one wonders how long it will be before it is broken. The Twelveswood was grievously wounded during the Calamity, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. The people are hopeful that restoring the wood, and thereby the power of the elementals, will put an end to their woes. Yet how long will that take? Centuries, I'd wager. Meanwhile, the Ixal will continue their incursions, spurred on by Garuda and her satiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gradanians uh, like it or not, sooner or later it will come to all-out war, and when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How value might the, the aid of a capable adventurer prove to them, then? I believe the second is Uda.
Souls of flame, drawn from the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore. Hurrah! Rauban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold. Where by the grace and glory of Naldar have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered. I speak of Uldar! There, at the Flame General's back, flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cardano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. Yeah! Yeah! So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters. That they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guest. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, downtrodden, and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flame. It is but a slow death. Enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Garleans make mock of our border and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands for Thor. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to rise forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you. Fly not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flame. Seek not to prosper from Uldar, but to restore her to prosperity. As the realm prospers, so shall Uldar. As Uldar prospers, so shall her people. Yaa for Uldar. Together we are one. Your grace. Rauban? People of Uldar, I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Uldar. Yet those who measured that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Uldar lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Uldar, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. Long live Nanamo! Glory to the Sultana! For victory and fortune, stride fearless into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn! Forsooth, 
in Alphano's analysis. The Old Dalans have a long history of conflict with the Malja, the beast tribe that worships the primal Ifrit. Judging by your look of distaste, I take it that you have encountered them. The Old Dalans do not shy from confrontation. If aught threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So have they dealt with the Ifrit thus far, smothering his flames each time he is stoked to life. Yet he is but one of several problems. Though they have been quiet these past five years, the Gallians have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees continue to arrive in droves, and Ulda has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanate's coffers are bottomless, and even assuming they have the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of her feet. It has been observed that the Elmulja are summoning him with ever-increasing frequency. Every time they do so, the Ildans are forced to smite the primal, and though they invariably succeed, each victory is brought, bought with blood. It is a war of attrition, which they cannot well sustain. Small wonder, then, that the immortal flames are eager to recruit more members. At such an desperate hour, an adventure of your experience would be most welcome in addition to their ranks. For their sake, I hope that the flame general's words struck a chord with you. Last but not least, Libsol Mensa. All right, over here. Ready to attend the remandment service? Be quick. The Admiral is due to give her address at any moment. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty crimson standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. Seven hundred summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the mother of oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. The crimson field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates while the black longship represents a pirate vessel. When the Galian Empire marched upon Eorzean, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our grand company was reborn. All answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda to Hilthier's bloody executioners, and together we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartano. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage. Yet many of ours did not survive. 
join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned her, to her the general earth. here is uh hits as fuck, as I gotta say. Mm. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom, much as the beast tribes have. A small wonder. Beneath the surface, one would struggle to tell them apart. It has been five long years since the Calamity struck. Five long years of tireless rebuilding. Yet still the wounds of the Calamity fester and weep. But when I stand atop the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore seeking blood for their accursed god. Newish fish fuck the bastards. The Sahagin have risen? While the mines of Ogomoro spew forth cobalt to push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crash against our creaking hull. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Galian Empire. Even now the curs fly their flags within our borders. Doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded, yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us, one bearing that will bring us victory over the beast hordes and the Empire both, and see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom, and stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well, a crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, gather beneath the undying crimson standard and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves till sea swallows all. Long live the Admiral! And remove them! Gather the lads! Oh, where's me cutlass? I'll follow ye to the seven hells, Admiral! Elfino's analysis. Fancy meeting you again. As the Admiral mentioned in her address, and so Minsa is plagued by two beast tribes. The first is the fish like Sahagan, worshippers of the primal Leviathan. The second are the Cobalts, who dwell beneath the earth and take the primal Titan for their god. As if the Beast Tribe's presence weren't troublesome enough, the Guardians have also uh, chosen to erect a fortress right in the, Min the Leminson's backyard. And that is, just, that is say, not for their eternal strife. As a nation of pirates, there is no end of blood feuds between the of various factions, and while they fight amongst themselves, the Gallians wet their blades and watch. If the Lamentons are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside, and their primal threat dealt with once and for all. To the end, I expect they will soon take decisive action against the Beast Tribes. Mark my words, the Maelstrom standard will be drenched in deeper shade of crimson there long. That, 
a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. I already have the choice for this. Essigos, this has been Philia. You are well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final remembrance service is now concluded? A moment ago, you say? What a coincidence. Justing aside, I trust you remember our guests from the Grand Companies. Well, delighted though we are to have them here at the Waking Sands, it would not be do to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. In short, hurry back. Make your decision. First off, uh, I need to, to do a couple things. Can I accept that? All right. This will actually allow me to experience something different because I I decided on a choice choice for uh, Essigos here beforehand. I, I've done this on another character, so I kind of knew the, the how how it goes. Also, apparently, the more players that you have in your uh, free company, ally, um, as part of a a faction. In this case, they're ordered a twin adder. Apparently, there's a bonus. I don't understand it, but. So I'm just going to go twin adder. I don't know. I feel like Essigos would probably go twin adder. Because. Just because. <laughs> Welcome back, Essigos. With the Grand Company's leader's words as illuminating as you had hoped. I, each nation is beset with problems. I trust you see now why your services are in such demand. Would that there were more for you, Essigos. But you must be tired from your journey. Why don't you rest a while and take a moment to reflect on your decision? Once your mind is made up, pray give the Grand Company officers your answer. of change are in motion regardless brother are you certain this course is best whatever do you mean dear sister the so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard waving rallies as though the calamity and seven umbral era warranted scarcely a mention well of course they were standard waving rallies Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. <laughs> Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the beast tribes and their primals do little to alleviate the pain. So, 
The task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I mean to find it. You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say, we will see eye to eye. I should hope so. <laughs> My lady! We are to escort you! Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister, and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew. I take it the Elder Seed Seers words were touched or hard. Have you resolved to entwine your destiny with that of the Twin Adders? Yes. Here's here's my thought. Uh, Elagos, my main, is a, uh, a Rodian. Um, he's a sea wolf and a sea wolf Rodian. So he. The sea and and just that kind of like sailing, that sort of theme, uh, kind of really more dealt to what would be more Elagosian. Essagos, while he is a uh, punchy sort of guy, he would prefer just peace and, you know... Everything is in self-defense, etc. Definitely not uh, warlike. And there's just something about Gridania and everything that's a little more his style. The only reason why he started in Old Da was because that's where the Pugilist Guild is. <laughs> um, and, and I decided to do that. So that's really the only reason why we started him in Old Da. So that's why he's, we're going with the Order of the Twin Air. Um, Ulda wasn't good because it was very wealth. It There's something about money and gratuity, and it, it just didn't quite fit. It's, and he's not necessarily as necessarily rugged as uh, the people of the warriors of the immortal flames would probably be especially when you consider we've spent a ton of time in Elda so far here so it feels it just feels more appropriate that Essagos would go with the order of twin adder plus apparently there's some sort of bonus for going order of twin adder when your free company is allied with them you have chosen wisely my friend the elder seats here will be overjoyed Without further ado, let me speak of practical matters. In order to complete the enrollment procedure, you must report to our headquarters in Gridania, the Adder's Nest. The building you seek stands in the southern part of the city, now called New Gridania. Give your name to the personnel officer there, and he will guide you through the formalities. I have no doubt that your deeds will bring great honor to you. great honor to our order. The next we meet in Gridania. I hope to be pr be proud to call you brother. So off to G Gardania.
You have come to the Adder's Nest, headquarters of the Order of the Twin Adder. Ever so do we welcome you. We would toil in the Elemental's name for the good of our forest nation. My name is uh, Essigos Winsmore. I believe you were expecting me. Ah, the great adventurer himself. Yes, our recruitment officer sent word that you are on your way. It is a pleasure and an honor both to welcome you to our ranks, my friend. Now let me gather together the relevant documentation. Sir! What is it? Report. An urgent message from the Amarizo Spire, sir. A high wind skyway ship ship has taken fire from imperial forces in the skies over the east shroud the vessel's engines were crippled sir and it was forced to make an emergency landing southeast of nine eyes nine eyes gods this could not have come at a worse time all but a handful of our forces are presently afield dealing with the ixal essigos i know full well that you have come to be formally inducted into our ranks but we have urgent need of your aid in all likelihood, the airship is bearing civilians, and if the reports are accurate, it will have come down dangerously close to guardian occupied territory. Please, make all haste to the area southeast of Saint Nine Ives. Locate the airship and ascertain the status of the prisoners, uh, passengers. All right, where do I need to go? So, take the thing that way. Oh, it's a trip without the thing. Uh, especially considering I haven't had to go there. Okay, I'm going to pop over to the Lancers Guild. Uh, before I hop on the ferry, though, I'm going to uh, take a quick break. Also, we might take a, a quick break for um, a preview of what is to come um, because uh, there is a, a daily I need to do of my, my other tune. And if it happens while I'm still streaming, then I will switch over to that and stream that. So uh, be right back while I uh, renew this restroom, refresh be beverage, etc.
All right. Back. There's the ferry. Oh. Ferry skipper's right here. Oh, shoot. Forgot my beverage. Back. All right. So weird because I I look at look at the screen I'm playing on that look at my preview of the the thing and you I can see better on here than I can over here. Nope. Did I pass the? Nope. It's coming. Here it is. Welcome to the Hawthorne Hut. Oh, what, 26? Okay, good. I need... <laughs> By the way, this part is also a thing which apparently has to... The same thing happens, uh, but in wherever you have your uh, grand company. Oh, shit. Here we are. Oh, we got a third one. There we are. Let's talk to this airman. You got duty. An adventurer? What are you doing out here? No, wait. Let's find some cover first. Oh. 
<sighs> the others have sent you? How do I know you're not an Imperial spy? You don't even have a uniform. Peace, friend. We mean you no harm. We are, you are the engineer of Garland Ironworks, are you not? We were alerted to your plight and have come to rescue you. Ah, and you are Essico's Windsmall, I presume. You were, I was told to expect an honorary ser serpent. My thanks for your aid, friend. Never seen a craft of this design. It must be Garland's work. Is there no end to this man's tre treachery? The Imperial officers. The secrets of magic tech belong in Imperial hands. They are not to be squandered by Erosian savages. We are taking this craft back to the fortress. Dismantle it if you must, and bring the engineer. Someone must pay for Garland's crimes. Imperial scouts from Castrum Orients. They mean to re uh, to requisition the ship. Wedge, you have to help him. That fool of a Lala fellow was hiding inside the tiny Bronco. A tiny Bronco? But isn't that Ironworks' latest creation? It's the first airship we built since the Calamity. The first since Master Garland, well, since he went missing. After years of work, she is finally ready for her first test flight, and she was soaring. She really was, till those bastards blasted her out of the sky. Attend me all. The Ironworks' latest cre creation must not fall into Guardian hands. We shall strike them swift and sure and rescue Engineer Wedge. As it goes, I trust we can rely on your support. Gotta say a fellow well, fell. May the matron watch over us. With me! To Amber, an ambush, to arms! Oh, big guy. Get rid of these guys quickly here.
There we are. Stupid Vanguard. Biggs! Ah, ah, ah. Wedge, you shouldn't have stayed with the ship. That, that was a close one. Too damn close. So, how does she look anyway? The auxiliary propeller is a dead loss, but I think we can wring enough thrust from the main propeller to get us airborne. A few minor modifications should be able to fly the tiny Bronco home. While you do your work, we shall keep watch over the perimeter. The enemy may yet be lurking nearby. As for you, Essegos, you have more than done your part today. I bid you return to the Addo's Nest and complete your enlistment. I pray there will be no further interruptions. And when next we meet, let it be as fellow serpents of the order. I uh, just wanted to say sorry, you know, for calling you an Imperial spy and all that. Got that one wrong, didn't I? <laughs> Seriously, though, if you hadn't told been for you and the twin other lads here, would be chained up in a dungeon by now. I mean, your death friend, you both are. Which? Thank you. We're very grateful. All right, back to Gridania. All right, I'm going to Gridania and I'm going to switch over. I'm going to switch characters so you can see see my um, see what Essegos is going to turn into, but on a larger scale. So. You know, <laughs> WoW doesn't have cues. <laughs> there are very few times when, when WoW has, has uh, uh, player cues to log into the game. Now, also to be fair, it these cues usually are pretty quick, at least in my experience. Final Fantasy 14, but WoW seems to be uh, a lot uh, quicker. Jimna, hug. <laughs> so if you look at my UI right now uh, uh, as Elegos, uh, one you'll notice I have almost a button for every single uh, one of the classes besides Blue Mage. Blue Mage, I don't really play that that much and is a little bit trickier. Is considered to be a limited job. So I can't just queue up for stuff with, with a Blue Mage, which is kind of weird. Uh, I got a few things, such as um, my Storm Sloop, because he's a Maelstrom. That'll be. Uh, 
uh, victory pose. Now it's movie night. As we go into the Praetorium. Also, Biggs and Wedge are in here. We just met them a few minutes ago. I'm not reading this off. One, they're automatic. So uh, you're just going to, if you're watching this, you're just going have to have to read them. The first half of this The first half of this um, does not have VA. Oh, at this level, I don't have meditation. But I turn on my wind form because you'll see, you'll see what a cluster <laughs> this one is. We will see this later with Essegos because this is actually part of the main story. Uh, this is part of the main story roulette or main scenario roulette. I think it's one of the ways to incentivize people to queue for these so that um, they can... Uh, uh, get through the story <laughs> for, for, for oh no for some reason uh uh asta who is viewing still viewing the cutscene i don't know why <laughs> Oh, he DC'd. Normally, uh, here, I'm going to, I'm going to, by all means. My stately dance. One of the few things you can unlock. Also, look how handsome he is. Oh, he's back. Or, or no, his, he fully logged out, so. We're running. I'm waiting for the tags it takes to, to get ahead. Here's the thing is, all those mobs? Yeah, we're just going to run past them and activate the left. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to skip them. Waiting for everybody to get out, get down here. Oh, all these mobs? Yeah, we're just going to root past them. Maybe we'll aggro them.
I try to click on the Magitech transporter, but there's so many people on top. Of, ah! Oh, and I die. Oh, well. Go back to the beginning. Take the shortcut. Oh, here we go. I'm <laughs> still in chat. Wow, this is the most courteous thing. It's like he's everybody is just waiting for uh, Harv to join us. We're like we're too impatient. We're just gonna clear out this room. There we are. Also with main scenario roulette, they uh, we can't skip the cutscenes. The plus side is that they have it on a timer thing, so it's automatically going through. Because you know those other ones, I've been like clicking on it. Also, I, I like how they show what we look like in these uh, uh, cutscenes. And every single person is always showing whoever they are in this position. And then I don't know if there's any logic to the rest of the party behind them. But when we get a wider shot, you'll be able to see it. I don't know if it's just like my angle on my monitor or something, but I can I can see things so much better in my uh, my uh, uh, stream preview than I can on my regular screen. I don't know why. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's settings on the monitor. The other way. No. Where is brightness? Um, contrast, maybe? Stick with that. I don't know. It's still not doing what I want. Guys, wait, damn it.
That's another thing. Is these, this is one of those let's progress through the story so the fights are super easy. Oh, guys, you said it's his ultimate weapon. If you find him, so too will you find your card. You'll see who this Sid guy is later. These instruments will honor every nook and cranny of the cast room. I think it's time we divided our forces. Pray go on and give chase. I'll track your movements from here and guide you through the complex. I'm not doing a voice. <laughs> I'm reading it. I said it wasn't. Let's stay in contact via Link Pro. Be careful, right? Also, because of every, how everybody rushes through all this from point to point, uh, some people get lost. <laughs> Honestly, if I was on a healer uh, and I, oh, actually, I might not have access to rescue. Click the thing. Back here to a lift. So everybody's on, we move on. Also, this whole connection between this thing and, and everything else that would be later. Ah, there she is. I trust you recognize our old friend Maggie, was it? They may must have shifted her from Sentry. Considering all she's been through, it's a wonder she's still operational. Tough old girl. Now you're suitably armed, you can blast open that bulkhead. The external walkway will take you back there. Follow it till you come upon a way down to the lower level.
Oh, no. No, I get to DC. Oh, well. Honestly, I don't think it's me. <laughs> but I could be wrong. So I have to wait until the character is considered to be lo properly logged out. And then I might have to wait in a queue. <laughs> Players in queue, 31. There, it's like the cutscene finished just as it, as they come back and it's like nobody noticed that I was gone. <laughs> You've been leaving a fine mess in your wake, adventurer. Hopefully the next time I do this, it'll be nice and straight. Is someone there? Garland, old friend. How it warms my heart to hear your voice again after all these years. Nero, is that you? You sound well. It would seem that this savage light agrees with you. The highest ranking tribunus of the 14th. It was you all this time. Tell me, Garland, how long do you intend to keep all the glory for yourself? Um, what? You've lost me. Don't play the fool with me. Ever since the Academy, I've been condemned to live in your shadow. By all objective measure, I was the most talented of the two of us. Yet that fact counted for naught beside your privileged birth. You were admired as the young prodigy simply because your father was something. Have you defeated, affected? I felt, anyways, I'm going to stop reading. It's going too fast. Anyways, he's, he's getting out in inferior already complex. Apparently, Sid was a bigger deal in the Garlean Empire, Empire at one time. So he defected to Eorzea. And near, everybody's still praising him as the greatest thing to Magitek. And anyways... He keeps getting considered to be uh, second rate.
Am I the only melee? There we are. See, these go really, really quick. What was that, like 30 seconds maybe? Oh, we have two dancers. I just noticed that. Are you all right? When Nero fled, damn it. Now we have voiceover. Very glib. I didn't say anything. I just glared at you. He's just making wild accusations.
I'm gonna go Super Saiyan! I've evolved to gold, Gaius Van Balsar! Also, look at my gun, which has a blade attached to it. I'm not compensating for anything. I just realized I'm the only melee DPS. Two tanks, two healers, uh, two dancers, a red mage, and a monk.
You know what, I'm gonna forget about positionals because he keeps turning. Either the tanks aren't in the same place or Yeah, these might go a little bit longer. My solution for them both being in the uh, tanks, both be having their uh, MD thing on, is to have them stacked. Just have them next to each other. Just in the same place. Your foe acts under the protection of the crystal he bears. So this is what empowers him. Beyond mortal limits. If you are to prevail, the hammer of darkness must needs be brought to bear upon the shield of light. White screen. I get lit up. And then darkens. Seems 
Take the task of keeping your champion alive has exhausted what strength you had left. Van Belsar, your enemy's shield is broken. The rest I leave to you. We will speak later, Ashian. But first, I must deal with you. The question of who is mightier remains. Come, adventurer. Let us find the answer together. Round two. Fight. ultimate weapon the ultimate magic and still you failed so much for the glory of man the glowing in 
balance afflicting the planet must be redressed. If it is permitted to worsen, the very laws of existence, both etheric and physical, will be warped beyond all recognition. Know you the root of this corruption? Hydaelyn. Like a parasite, she must be burned out if the planet is to recover. And not but the return of the one true god will ensure her complete excision. Yet to pave the way for the master's return, a chaotic confluence of untold proportions must needs be brought about, and that will necessitate the presence of the primals. Needless to say, both you and your scion accomplices cannot be suffered to interfere in this endeavor. You will not leave this place alive. Figure that out some other time. What was that? Nope. Oh. Here we go again. I just want to make sure I landed properly. But that's the Praetorian. To see the rest of it, you'll have to watch later <laughs> once I get to that. That's the girls. Okay, I landed fine. Okay. All right, I landed properly, so I'm going to uh, leave the party.
find another good stopping point for us goes here and but while it's logging me in i'm going to uh take a quick pee, pee break so be right back i've been drinking a lot today All right, that's where we leave off in this, guys. Uh, we are speak with the person officer at the Twin Adder. It's a ghost. It does my spirit well to see you returned. World ar word arrived just moments ago about the team at Nine Ives. Ives, lest you worry, the two engineers are safely on their way. The lieutenant informs me that you are instrumental in the mission success. Had you not found uh, Engineer Biggs when you did and helped us to route the Gallians, things might have been very different. And all this before you were even inducted into the order. You are well on your way to carving out a fine career for yourself beneath the Twin Adder standard. But without further ado, let us see to your induction. Twelve willing, there won't be any further interruptions. Protocol requires that I appraise you of who you we are and what we do, after which I will invite you to swear an oath to your own free will. <clears throat> the twin the order of the twin adder is the Grand Company of Gadania. It brings together the martial, economic, and technological resources of our nation that we might stand strong in times of direst adversity when our very survival hangs in the balance. Our order was formed in the days before the calamity in readiness to fight the Gaudian Empire and to combat the beast tribes and their primals. Needless to say, our struggle continues to this day. Elder Sietzia Khan Isana is the supreme commander of our forces. Under our wise leadership, we protect the people of Gerdania and the sanctity of the Twelveswood. As the intertwined serpents that grace our standard, lest force-born strive as one with friends from afar to ensure their peace ever shall ever reign in Gerdania. In doing so, we honor the will of the elementals, and theirs is the will of the wood. Now then, Essigas Winsmall, I ask that you give us give unto us your oath of allegiance in whichever fashion you see fit. Woods will be done. I shall strike down our enemies and drink their blood, or my life for the older seeds here. Woods will be done. That sounds more important. So you know the words of our grand company. That is well. Bound by this common belief, let us strive to preserve all that is good in this great nation. By the power vested in me, I assign you the rank of Serpent Private Third Class. You are now a man of the Order of the Twin Adder. Go forth, Private Winsmall, and do that which brings peace to the Twelveswood and honor your, our name.
Can you hear me, Jessicas? This is Minfilia. An officer of the Order of the Twin Adder contacted me with news of your enlistment. My congratulations, Private Winsmall. I have no doubt that you have you are eager to make the acquaintance of our new comrades, but I would ask that you pay a visit to your old ones first. Remember, though you are now a serpent of Gardania, you are no less a scion. Pray return to the Waking Sands at your earliest convenience. There are some friends here whom I would very much like you to meet. We shall be waiting. A distant call of a friend in need, perhaps? As you are needed elsewhere, I shall not keep you any longer. I would, however, suggest speaking with the High command, high Serpent Commander Vorse Halwu. I don't know that how to pronounce that. Before you depart, he may provide you with assistance on the journey ahead. Now accept the the quest, my little chickabo, twin adder, by speaking with Voice Hudiwa. Quest will be completed in order to must be completed in order to proceed in the end to the end of the main scenario for a realm reborn. The re missions unlocked. My little chick bow. No. Nothing. I'm just there we go. Vorsal uh believes it's past time that he issued you a personal chick bow. This is what I need. <laughs> ah, private Winsmall, I understand that you have been working tirelessly in Gardania's name. You're truly an example to your fellow serpents. But tell me, have you ever felt as though you couldn't get to your destination quickly enough? That perhaps you could do with swifter pair of a swifter pair of legs. If so, you might consider uh, getting a personal ch chocobo. You have yet to to be issued your own bird. Am I correct? Given your considerable talents, you should be able to obtain one in no time at all. Let me tell you how to go about it. First, you must obtain a serpent co chocobo issuance by exchanging company seals from the quartermaster. Once you have this deed, present it to our main. Men singular, and he will uh, furnish you with a suitable bird. All right, quick check on something. Currency. I have no seals. How many seals do I need? I just need two hundred. That's not bad. I will do a leveling queue. Just 10 minutes. Well, oh, crap. Where is that? Over there. I got an idea. Let's check on my gear. Brand new ring. It's fine. It should be fine for another few levels, if anything. I think I had that for quite a while. I think I'm fine. Oh, the choker.
Ah, right, here we go. And we got plunder to your chest, okay. All right, that helped. I mean, I think a ring for at least a weathered ring. There we go. Shut up a little. Where was it? Here it is. This is just that area unlock thing. Cutscene about the lavender beds. This is a housing district. 
So it, you have to obtain uh, sergeant level, I think, serpent sergeant in the case of Twin Adder, in order to to get a in order to get housing. See, there's an apartment building. Nice little thing, has a delivery moogle, has a mender. There's a min thing since I'm here. Apartment caretaker. Welcome to Lily Hills apartment. Whether you're coming with an eye to buy, it's simply a by or simply a question to ask. My services are at your disposal. Apartments are available for 500,000 gil. Uh, before you purchase an apartment, however, you must obtain level 50 in a single class. Furthermore, you must hold a rank of second lieutenant, that's what it is, or above in one of the grand companies. In order to purchase an apartment in Kobai Goten, you must first complete the main scenario class. Quest not without incident. That's for later on. And there's apartment merchant, so I can get stuff for it. Gets you, you're essentially automatically in, attuned. Oh my. So you, you got this whole like area. So people can see other people's uh, houses. But striking dummies is an entrance to a home. Ooh, neat. As well as personal ha people having houses, you can also go get an estate. So also at a place called the mist which is the housing district in limsa Lamenta. this is where my uh free company's uh estate is In addition, we have a nice little, uh, I think it's like the Asian theme sort of thing. I think that might be how it is. I don't know how we set it up, but our FC leader did it. We got a couple vendors. We have upstairs rooms. I think we have a downstairs. Yeah, we have a downstairs over here. Which is pretty, va they're pretty vacant right now, but I think that one of these rooms or somehow um, our FC leader is going to uh, make a crafting room for us. So we'll have like tables which we can use for for a while of crafting. And I think it gives you an orc. Um, gives you a thing. Uh, there's also a workshop. Fun. 
fabrication station. Need ethereal wheel. What does, it, does this do? A metal stand upon which ethereal wheels wheels are placed and spun to to change. Hold three grade one, two grade two, and one grade three wheels. And here's wheels. I don't know what they do. No things for ships. Oh, wow. Oh, come on, Tank. Voyage control. Got some submersibles that we have. Company chest. A dungeon. Yay, that Marauder has uh, gained a level. Boom.
an achievement to crush your enemies. Defeat 500 enemies. Yay! This is going a lot smoother than the first time I was in here.
Mm. I got turned around there. And uh, do some settings about those those uh, uh, Mario did a good job. All right. Now I have company seals. I have enough to do a thing. Uh, back to Gardania. I'll turn in that where my heart is, the lavender beds later. Speak to the Carter Master. Hit to materials. No, material. He Serpent Chocobo license issuance. Now I need to give it to... Where are they? They're by the Chocobo Keep. Go fake. It would be by the truck boat keep. Yeah. We'll wear those funny chocobo masks. Want a bird issued, you say? Then I'll need to see your serpent chocobo issuance. Yes, everything appears to be in order. Moment, please. I'll be right back with your chocobo.
And here she, here he is. The fellow has been in the high spirits the, the past few bells. He must have sensed that his master was coming. Now then, to make it official, you'll have to give your noble steed a name. What do I want to call him? So, Elagos has Windrider. I'm calling him Windspeed. Q. <laughs> I dare say he likes his name. Here is your... Very own Chickabo whistle. Simply blow it and your feathered friend will come bounding to your side. But do forgive him if he doesn't respond when summoned in crowded city areas or monster infected leader. Chickabars are stout, hardy creatures, but they have their limits. And lastly, I present you with your Chocobo Rider's license as is required by law. And that concludes all the formalities I wish, wish you and your Chocobo long years and fulfilling companionship. Yay, that's done. Let's continue with the main quest. Which means we need to go back to Vesper Bay, which doesn't have a Aetherite uh, crystal. So, But I've got nice little Aetherite tickets that I can just transport there. Here's the really cool thing. Now that I've finished this quest, I can do something else. I can hop on to a completely different mount, which I got because I had purchased collector's editions. Oh, I do want to, to quickly grab something. Mm. This and... So I can go here to kind of get an idea of uh, where I got some mount speed increases, but I haven't gotten any far enough to really get any as of right now. So I'm doing the slow speed. But it's faster than normal speed, so. Welcome back, us ghost. Lady Mephilia awaits you within. Oh, and now I get seals. Welcome back. It seems you wasted no time putting your skills to work. How do I know? Why, the recruitment officer called to regale me about the tale of your heroics. The pride of his voice was palpable. We signs are truly fortunate to have you with us. Essegos. Now, well, when last we spoke, I said that I wanted you to meet some friends, did I not? Well, I neglected to mention that you have already met. Tatru, please show them in. This way, sirs. Bigs and Wedge! Thanks again for getting us out of that mess. We owe you our lives. And I don't think we'll properly introduce ourselves. I'm Biggs. And and I'm I'm God's man, spit it out, will you? Wedge, at your service. I'm pleased to say that Biggs and Webs will be staying with us for a while. Med detect driven contraptions such as airships grow ever more vital to the city state of Eorzea. As a neutral party, it is judged that we science should serve as the keepers of this technology. Of course, for this, this we need the knowledge of ex experts, and so we requested the assistance of Garland Ironworks, who are very kindly sent us two of their finest engineers. Our happy family continues to grow. On behalf of the science, I bid you welcome to the Waking Sands.
Like every soul here, I love you yours here. And I count myself blessed to have been given this chance to stand with you all and fight for the future of the realm. Never have I known such fulfillment, such happiness. Uh, he needs you to investigate the sylphs. This is important, actually. Now, having set aside the formalities, we have a favor to ask of you. Beriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessium? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have conducted a study at the behest of the Order of the Twin Adders. Papalina, Ida, a synopsis, if you would. Our task was to survey the behavior of the Sylphs, a beast tribe indigenous to the Twelves Wood. Oh, how to describe them. They look like sister twins, floating ones, that worship the primal red moon. <clears throat> Though technically a beast tribe, sylphs are blessed with a comparatively personable demeanor, conducive to peaceful communication. Offering us an invaluable opportunity to learn what the beast tribes know of the primals. While Ramu's existence is well documented, the sylphs do not, or perhaps cannot, summon the primal any longer insofar as can be ascertained. Until such time as we know, it would be unwise to assume that the threat posed by the primal has passed. Which leaves Gridania with the added worry of not knowing what they should be worrying about. In that regard, they are hardly alone. What we can say with absolute certainty is that Gridania has its hands full fending off Garuda, who, I need hardly remind you, is among the most savage and terrible of all known primals. In short, it is essential that we approach the Sylphs in as diplomatic a manner as possible. Words and actions can be misconstrued. The only sure way to communicate our intentions is the echo. Winning the Sylph's favor may well bring us a step closer to mitigating the threat of the Primals. Will you help us? I am grateful. Lovely. Well, as much as I'd like to help, I'm afraid I would be of little use to anyone in Gridania. A veritable babe in the woods. Ida and Papalimo, however, should be able to see the forest for the trees. Is that not so, Mincilia? Indeed. You are willing? Leave it to me. Us, Ida, us! They're an interesting pair. Oh, at the adder's nest. So back to Gardania. <laughs>
We know far too little to self delay any worthwhile plans. We must call upon the science once more if we are to... Ah, beg your pardon. Tis a terrible habit of mine to think aloud. But tell me, what brings you to the adder's nest? I just saw some. Uh, social. Most. Didn't I? There we go. The serpent salute. Hey, let's do that again. All right. Commander Vosal Holo has been waiting to aid the half science. Well, is in your private Winsmall reporting for duty. That's the sea I'd like to see from an enterprising young serpent. Good day, Commander. Sorry to disappoint you, but other business brings us here today. Ida and Popolino, always a pleasure to see the two of you. My men, tell me your you quest you quest in the name of the science were late. Quite so, Commander. A little bird told us that the twin adder have, was in need of our adventuring prowess. Aye, your little bird sings true. No doubt you've heard they're investigating the sylphs, which curious beast tribe that call, calls the depths of the, the Twelswood home. The sylphs are, for the most part, a peaceful bunch, much to the delight of the elder seed seer who has no desire to see her people embroiled in yet another fruitless war. The twin adder is of the mind, and it is precisely for this reason, that the sylph's relation to the primal Ramu Mu has raised a flag of warning amongst our ranks. Friendly as they may appear, beastmen will be beastmen. Should there be even a sliver of a chance that the summoning of the primal might disturb the balance between Gordania and the sylphic tribes, it is a possibility we cannot ignore. Better to be safe than sorry, indeed. Do we strike at Ramu or leave the sylphs in their own ways? That is the question. Yet I find myself lacking ample knowledge to arrive at an answer. Opinions abound within Gorania, but to listen only to one's own is among the greatest mistakes a commander can make. I would hear from the other side, the sylphs themselves, and seek an impartial party to serve as my liaison. This is where you scions come in. The sylphs of Little Solace remain untempered and have held many a productive dialogue with our people. I would hear their candid thoughts on their tempered brethren. That said, I urge you to exercise due caution, sylphic tradition, and etiquette bear little resemblance to our own. It would not do to have any cross-cultural faux pas get in the way of productive parley. En route to Little Solace, you will come upon the Hawthorne Hut. Our officers stationed there can enlighten you on how to win the Sylph's favor. May your expedition be a worthwhile one. A friendly palver with the Sylphs, this will be a... A pleasant enough diversion. The Hawthorne Hut, was it? Why, I believe the ferry departing from West Shore Pier should take us straight there. A friendly palvaria, indeed. I hope this will be, be as straightforward as you say, Papa Limo. You guys take that. I'm just going to teleport. <laughs> Where is it? Oh. Well, crap.
I guess it's one of those they assumed I wasn't going to be there, but I already kind of went over there. I mean, if I was not a twin adder, I would not have been there, but, you know, this is kind of annoying. Fortunately, it's by the Lancer's Guild, so it's not far. Ah, the fairy docked at the base of the hill will carry you across the lake to the shroud. Once you're ashore, head due east so you can find the Hawthorne hut without much trouble. Now I'll travel to the Hawthorne hut. That was called annoying. Indeed, I am Emelyn the Twin Adder. I understand you are here to burn the Fitzsilf, yes? For all their whimsy, there are a wary lot, particularly since the Empire has come to the Shroud. Earn their trust, however, and be friendly as any folk. They have their quirks, but so do we all. No? Would you know more? You would do well to speak with the master of this hut, Rolf. Rolf, oh, he's, for he's forgotten more about the Sills than I'll ever know. Wolf Hawthorne's patri patriarch of the uh, beekeeping Hawthorne family is said to be well worse than Sylphic customs. Come to learn a thing or two about the Sylphs, have you? I'll tell you one one thing. You're, they're pe peculiar folk. Well, peculiar, you ask? Well, let me just... Well, just let me tell you. They're... They're a... Uh, beg your pardon, friend. My memory's just not what it used to be. Doesn't seem that old, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, I've seen much in many of my adventuring days, and it's all a clutter in my noggin now. Though I've shared my stories with those around the hut before, I might have more luck with them. Alright. The Sylphs, yes, father told me their stories plenty of times. What I've always found most captivating is how their concept of etiquette is almost completely alien to our own. You do best not to underestimate them or account for their childlike looks, lest your uh, your face up in a mess of glyph squiggles and chocobo scratches. The quickest way to a woman's heart might be through her stomach, but don't even think about trying to force your foodstuffs on a sylph. They sustain themselves simply by bathing in the sun, or so Wolf once told me. The sylphs, inveterable, inveterate tricksters and troublemakers, that's what they are. One day they're draw drawing marble ma faces on our masks, and the next day there's Sending our young sentries falling to the bottom of a ravine. Tell them to stop and they just laugh at you. Rolf claims they they harbor no ill will, but I dare say such pranks are no laughing matter. Oh, of course, of course. Hearing the stories, well... My stories has brought the memories flooding back to me. I feel like, I feel, I feel like dancing. Yes, nothing brings people together like a little ta a toe tapping. A sylph told me long ago that dancing is a time honored greeting among their kind. You do well to remember this. Just may help win the favor of your forest friends. Oh, still here. Uh, great. There's one more thing you should know about the cells. They don't take kindly to guests who show up empty-handed. To earn their trust, you do well to bring along a... Uh... Drat, what was it again? And my wife Rosa and I were just speaking the matter not days ago. Oh, forgive me, friend. 
Speak with Ursa at the comb. Her memory should prove more reliable than mine own. It is this way, I think, right? Yes, over there. Actually, you know what? I got this tw twin adder chocobo. Let me let me actually switch over to that. Mounts. My company chocobo. Hey, hey, cute. A peace offering for the sylphs where anyone else had recommended a jar of honey but i fear that wouldn't be be past your front doorstep dear no their tastes run more with the unusual are you perchance familiar with milk root that's what we call the root that is most fiendish that most fiendish seedkin the ocho the ochu when chewed it exudes a cloudy liquid that's said to induce curious visions in the aviber You'd not catch me dead trying this stuff, but the sylphs seem to enjoy it to no end. I've not seen an Uchu around the comb in quite some time, but I did did encounter a suspicious clump of grass the other day where you to stimulate it somehow with some of this amber syrup, for example. You might be surprised at what comes out. Good luck. Back of the road. Path looks a lot different uh, now that it's daylight. Previously, I was here in the dark. Although it's 6 p.m. Ar Erosian time, so. Yeah. Eorosian. Aorosian. Not Erosian. Aorosian. Ah, you're back. Was my wife able to direct you to a suitable offering? Milk root. Of course. The sylphs quaff the cloudy stuff as quick as they do a flagon of mead. The effect's just about the same as well. Any road, a gift of milk root will have the sylph calling you friend and brother the moment they lay eyes on it. Now let me wrap that up for you. I'm, I'm starting to feel a little woozy. I've taken the liberty of wrapping your milk root well and good. This should keep it nice and fresh, not to mention spare you from the god all, god's awful stench. The sylphs love this stuff, but me, I'd rather bury my nose in ch chocobo dung. I dare say the, the reek, I dare say the reek even rivals the breath of the morbid that's put an end to my venturing days. But I can tell you that, tell you, 
but I can tell you that story another time. We have more important matters to attend to today. Yes, the Sils are an eccentric bunch, but I shared their company enough to do their kind of heart. They're not, they'll not shun you, shun one whose intentions are true. May your parley be a fruitful one, friend, and do not stop by my return. On, and do stop by in your return. There's a flagon of full flower mead f with your name on it, if you'll regale me with your adventuring tales. Ah, and before I forget, uh, don't go traipsing off just yet. Emmeline here would have a word with you. Travel in safety, friend, and do pass along my regards to the winged ones. It's good to see your knowledge of Sylphic culture has matured. I see no reason to delay our mission any further. Upon your arrival in Little Sala, seek out a young Sylph by the name of Comuxio. He has served as an intermediary between our peoples on an many an occasion and has the choice ear of their tribe's elder. I see that Hawthorne, Hutt, Hawthorne has furnished you with some of the melodious root of the food the self to adore. I have something of far greater import for you to deliver. A missive from the elder seed seer herself. To summarize, the letter's contents is brief. In brief, it vouches for the integrity of our envoy, that would be you, and restates Gradania's desire to maintain a harmonious relationship with our long-standing friends of the forest. The war with the Ixal has taken a toll on our resources. We can, call, can ill afford to get mired in another conflict. I need not to press upon you any further the importance of this mission. May the Twelve see you return with good tidings. Time for diplomacy. Walking one is not familiar to, not familiar to this one. This one does not trust strange, strange walking ones. Strange dancing ones might be a different story, but this one, one expects no such thing. Walking one should go home and leave this one be. This one will welcome walking one who moves like this. these ones. If walking one would, would talk to this one, this one will answer. This one is busy, busy one, so walking one should speak with quick tongue. Walking one would bring gift to this one. Walking one is most kind. Walking one brings milk group. Milk group fills this one with great joy. This one gives thanks, gives many, many thanks. Walking one carries message message for Elder One. This one will deliver the message to Elder One. Walking one should not worry. Hello there. We were own voice from Gadonia and we're here to treat with your people. Hi, right, we've come to pay our respects to your elder and learn from him more than of your Lord Ramu. Who are these ones? These ones, walking ones, come from Gridania? Walking ones become, become a dancing one and brought milk group, but walking one tricks this one. This one does not like tricks. This one will speak no more. Elder one is busy. Walking ones should go home. Go home, you say? But the sylphs and little souls have always welcomed Gridanians envoys with open wings. Letter carried by Essigos. Here is an oath of peace penned by the elder Cynthia herself. Still, you would refuse us? This one's reasons are no business for walking ones. Other one says no words for Gridania. Walking ones waste everyone's time. Well, I never turned away at the gates. Whatever did you do to deserve such a rude welcome? Was Esco's jig insufficiently jiggy? I'm as baffled as you, but sometimes tells 
but something tells me recent events have our erstwhile fluttery friends feeling uncommonly wary. It would seem they have no choice but to ask around and see how we might earn their trust. Three things I probably won't use. Say, Essegos, how are you in the mood for dancing? That's right, dancing. We went through all the trouble to learn the traditional greeting, but you've greeted hardly any of them. You've greeted hardly any of them. Why, if I were a sylph, I'd be beside myself if we didn't lie with delight to see an adventurer expressing interest in my culture. Me, of course, I'd be happy to join. Ow, ow, there are some bloody leg cramps of mine acting up again. Hold on, I'm gonna create a button. Just make this easier. Button, okay. Dance. Ooh, walking one shows Jolly Dance. Jolly Dance fills this one with good cheer. Let these two be friends. I'm going to turn around so you can see me dance. Walking one would be friends with these one. This one is overjoyed, but this one see, keeps the way, ways of weaving a secret. Even if walking one learned the secret, walking one could not weave in the same way. Dance! Oh, Walkie Wen is friend of these ones. Friendly like gracious elder one for a city knows how to how to dance with these ones' hearts. Essegos, would you like to hear the good news or the better news? The good news is that your lovely dancing has brought smiles and high spirits to all of Little Solace. The better news? Why, it's thoroughly recovered from thoroughly recovered from these cursed leg cramps. Onward to our next adventure. Basically, she got it. She skipped that on dancing. Papalino has an ocean to India. As you as an adventurer, you are no stranger to be of helping distressed folk, I wager. Tales of good deeds are quick to spread. The adventurer who comes to the aid of the local populace can go from stranger to hero overnight. No doubt you see what I'm getting at. The sylphs can, who make their homes in Little Solace do so having been given with their home, woodland home. Surely they would have their fair shares of troubles. Seek out troubled self and see what might be done to ease their worries. A sound plan, would you not think? That said, the sills are not known to share their worries with outsiders. You would have better off inquiring about from here media of the Gradanians who resides here. She would most likely be privy to the sills troubles. Praise be to the elementals. I cannot express how happy I am to see an adventurer with a truly gentle heart. The sylphs of little solace are sorely in need of aid. Pray hear me out. Being a temporary settlement, little solace wants for amenities, not least the stout set of defenses. Consequently, beasts from malms around are free to wander in and terrorize the hapless residents. The Zisgorlins and Galnats and that roam these parts are especially troublesome, but slaying one of 
of each would serve as a warning for the rest. Furthermore, perhaps you could gather three brownie bunch br brushes, brownie brushes as well. They would play an important role in Sylphic culture. I do not claim to know the details, but what would some feral beast prowling the forest not easily come by? When you have done with the deeds, seek out Camuxio. He is slow to warm to outsiders, but our good our good intentions will not be lost on him. My own experience speaks to his. Dancy one is still here. Dancy one can dance all night. This one's trust is not so easily earned. Hmm. Dancy one brings brownie bushes for me. This one can dye thread once more. This one is pleased. Means Dancy one kills bitey, bitey buzzy one. This one hates, hates, hates bitey buzzy ones. Dancy one is kind, too kind. Many walking ones come to this. These. These ones abode, but few are friendly like Dancing One. Perhaps this one was wrong not to trust Dancing One after all. Kamixi of the Little Solace must entrust you with the task. This one asks Dancing One for forgiveness. These ones have many troubles since Walking Ones last came to our abode. This one can be, be careful, always careful. But Dancing One is not like other Walking Ones. This one can trust Dancing One. This one can ask Dancing One for help. Strange walking ones with bodies of steel come to home with these ones. This one still ste thinks steel ones come from Empire. Where Empire goes, many living ones become dead ones. Tree fall and bushes burn. These ones' home is in danger. Danger! This one begs for da dancing one to help this one, one no more. Dancing one is friends with these ones and walking ones, yes? Dancing one must speak with these ones here and walking ones in Hut House and find out more. This one has bad feeling. This one feels steel ones are after something. But this one is should speak no more. No dancing one. This one depends on kindness of dancing one. Steel one. Strange steel walking ones? Yes, they have been seen. Steel walking ones carry big boxes. Always walking ones hunt. For shiny treasures. This one likes treasure. The 
Shush. This one says, steel walking ones are scary. Like touch ones. This one hates scary. And scary ones are scary friends. Chris and Tide's clad head to toe in steel, you say? Imperial soldiers, no doubt. I couldn't tell you what they are plotting, but I'm sure it's nothing good. Men clad in strange armor? Why, now that you mention it, I did see some suspicious types of things. They are gathering deep in the forest. I sim I simply assume they were adventurers. This one is happy to see Dancing One return. What did Dancing One learn? This one sees steel ones walk, steel walking ones come from Empire. Carry boxes go walking deep, deep through trees. With this one's thought, steel walking ones are up to nasty, no good things. This one knows forests well. Steel walking ones try to hide, but this one will find them. This one will borrow Dancing One's map. This one makes map. Makes mark right here. This is where steel ones hide. This one knows. Dancing one will go looking for steel ones. Yes. Oh, there. Here, I'm, I'm in his purple circle. Dancing One is back. This one breathes sigh of relief. This one is worried. Hmm. Dancing One's found something? Dancing One found paper inside box. This is message from Empire. This one can read Walking One symbols. The message paper has, has names of food and rocks. Food and rocks are inside boxes. This one knows. But this is one doesn't understand. Food and rocks mention all come from home of these ones. 
How do steel walking ones know to find them? Is there a sneaky one hiding behind this one's wings, snooping one selling secrets to steel walking ones? This one f fears for this one's home, but dancing one has helped this one much today. Dancing one must promise to always be friend to these ones. Helpful one arrives at a good time. This one needs helpful one's help. <coughs> when these ones need me, Claxio ventured outside Little Solace alone. Alone, Zen face. Safe. Helpful one should find Claxio. Claxio struck west after leaving the settlement. Hurry before Claxio ends up in the belly of a beastly one. What? Walking one wants this one to return to Little Solace? Don't make this one laugh. This one is wary of living those those are not of living with those who are not these ones. This one wants to be alone. These ones rely on walking ones for everything. No no better than these ones that summon a primal one. One small wonder the, this one chose to leave. This one thought this was a likely place to build a home, and then meddling one arrives, forces this one to go deeper in the forest. Meddling one is forbidden from following this one. Away with meddling one. What? Claxio refused to return to these ones and went deeper in the forest? But this one saw touch ones lurking in the forest. Helpful one must hurry. Hurry and find Claxio. Helpful one should search for sp spools of thread on the forest floor. These things will lead helpful one to Claxio. But hurry, hurry before touch ones take Claxio away. Duty. Meddling one is back. This one told meddling one to be gone. Tell Comixio that this one will never go back. Never. Touch ones. Touch ones should go away too. This one is a good one. Everyone should just leave this one alone. Be on guard. I suppose these hills have been tempered, brought under the thrall of the primal Ramu. I came into the Amalt I tempered by a freak. This silk exists only to serve their deity. 
Thou not answer to words, only steal. I take no pleasure in this, but I must be done. Oh. This, this one is safe. This one was so scared. Claxio, this one has been worried. So very worried. Is Claxio unharmed? Still in possession of wits? Kukumuxio, and Medellin one as well. well. Why are these two here? These two came to Brexio, Claxio. That Claxio well, is safe fills this one with joy. Kumuxio, forgive this one. This one did not mean to run away from Little Sauls. This one was just afraid. These ones who live in Little Solace are changing, becoming friendly with other ones. This one feared that these ones were forgetting who these ones are, like Touch Ones did. But this one was wrong. This one can see that now. Meddling or helpful one, this one is grateful. This one will return to Little Solace to be with Kamuxio and friendly ones. Well, that should see to it. What say you return to Little Solace as well? I, for one, could do with a nice hot bath. Thaumaturge and a pugilist, these two are. Eh, mate. Ooh, nothing aggroed. Nice. Mm, my aggro this is. Or not. This one thought Claxio was lost forever. Helpful one saved Claxio. Now these ones can be Hanley again. This one is known for men known many walking ones, even many kind of walking ones. But helpful one is kindest and strongest of all. Helpful one is hero to these ones. Helpful one will bring these ones and walking ones closer together. This one knows. This one will help. Will take helpful one to see elder one. But elder one is elder one is. Mount speed increases. In Central Shroud, East Shroud. Hey, I'm in the East Shroud right now. Middle Lenosha, Lower Lenosha, Western Thanalin, and Central Thanalin. Don't worry, I'll get more later.
Kamuxi, I would make a confession to you. This one must ask kind one's forgiveness. This one made a promise to take kind one to see elder one. Yes, but this one cannot. This one cannot because elder one is not here. Elder one is not anywhere. Elder one went into forest yesterday, but has not come back. This one is worried. Elder one often goes into forest, but never, never for this long. Kind one will help find elder one. Yes, near the... Near where Elder One disappeared is the home of a walking one named Baskarian. Baskarian may I know what happened to Elder One. This one would talk talk to Baskarian, but walking ones do not always trust these ones. Would kind one talk to Baskarian for these? This one? And kind one comes from Gridania, yes? If Gridania lived many and Gridania lived many many kind ones, yes? This one begs for kind, begs of kind one. Please go to Gerdania and ask fellow kind ones for help. And please hurry. These ones are not safe until Elder One returns. I'm actually going to call it here. I got some other things I want to do. Um, and we will resume with the Eskos. Um, or maybe we'll see about checking out the intros for the other starter zones and see what they look like um, um, too. Although I kind of want to get this guy up. He's very close to becoming a monk, uh, which is basically the job portion. See, there's a section here which says Soul Crystal. Soul Crystal is uh, basically an indication of your job, an upgrade from pugilist to monk, uh, which is what my other one was that you saw. But I don't get those until level 30 and finishing up this series of quests. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. But um, that's it for tonight. Thank you for extra bonus stream. Check it out. So tomorrow we'll some of this and some D&D &D maybe. We'll see. See how everybody's up to. I'm going to check in on that, but we'll see. Anyways. Bye.